Hello my people and uh, we are back again and all right so in this video I will be mentioning you some of the things that you need to know in JavaScript and React JavaScript in order to crack the interviews I and mean, we will say most of them because probably the interviews uh, will most likely be connected with, with each other all right so we will go through a few of the main JavaScript concepts like hosting closures and uh, what else is there? Event loops. Yeah, they like how the promises work, the set time and stuff like that. And I would say, yeah, they are pretty important for you to know if you're going to give an interview about front end development or maybe back end. There's not much of a difference, you know. Back end also like in Node.js or MongoDB, that's a different thing. So not, not much of a different thing, but yeah, you got the point. So well, what are we going to do in this video? I will be mentioning you, JavaScript, uh, I told you already, host and click. Closures and event loops. I will men explain this in total brief, and we will talk about a few React uh, hooks. Actually, the li React life, si life cycles using the React hooks, the use effect one, and uh, we will do a last practice that is that might be asked in an interview. Well, I was asked in the interview before, where at the time I didn't uh, I didn't have a goddamn idea what is React, and <laughs> and yeah. So well, let's see how it goes. I hope everything went, uh, you know, went should be good. If you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, do subscribe. I mean, I'm not forcing you to subscribe. You can subscribe uh, for more contents in the future, and you can like this video, share this video with your buddies, with your friends, stuff like that. If you want to help them out, I mean, say like, what's a human life anyway? Just a few years in this world. So better share this video and like this. And liking doesn't really help me, but I feel good personally. So yeah, let's get into this. I would say interview practice. And uh, here we are going to... Okay, first of all, what are we going to do? I will be mentioning a few JavaScript practices that we should be doing, right? Uh, so yeah, let's just... I'm thinking to directly make a React application, so I will be doing console login there. But I think that might be a little bit more confusing for you because I mean, like, you know, you may not be the React guy, you just want to information about JavaScript. So, yeah, I don't judge anyone. Let's make an empty HTML thing with a source of something. First of all, we'll be talking about the hosting, hosting JavaScript in JavaScript. So, it's a very basic concept. I mean, like, people really much make it a really big concept. But I would say, well, this is very basic. I mean, I don't think we should. It should take us more than two minutes to go with the thing, alright? But I should. I will take a little bit of time just to actually explain this hosting thing. So, what exactly is hosting in JavaScript? Well, the thing is, like, you have the ability to call a function even before it's uh, you know declared in the code, and you might know it. You cannot do that using the arrow function because I would say what what are the what are the barriers actually? So. Let's uh, take an example of calling a variable, like console logging a variable, even before that has been declared. I would say, yeah, we are declaring the variable in the future, but before we have not declared the variable. So let's see what is going to happen. We'll say console log uh, f name, for example, and we will say let uh, f name is equal to uh, Ferris or Eldoni. It doesn't really matter. So yeah, we are saying something like that. And uh, now let's go live. Let's see what's up, and we will need to go to F to L. So, guess what we saw? They are saying us. Host, this is a file, right? Cannot access F name before initialization. So, what happened here? This let, this let, uh, actually let variable creates kind of like a blocking stuff. Like, I mean, you cannot. It doesn't really uh available. It doesn't really you know, provide the. Uh, pro it doesn't really provide this uh, variable throughout the global states, so it's available on a, in a kind of like a, on a block level. So maybe if you're going to go, <coughs> if you're inside a function, and you define a variable inside a function with a let, let with a let uh, with a let property, so you cannot use a function outside of that. Uh, you cannot use a variable outside of the function. But that's the same case with the constant. So yes, they are saying us. Yeah, the FNM has not been initialized. That means basically, if we put the FNM console log below this 
of reinitializing f name is equal to something they're gonna give us the console log but if we do it before you already know we are gonna throw open it with an error so what do we do to not get an error well the easy solution is change the led to variable var <coughs> so what happens <coughs> when we change the led to var is basically now we are saying yeah this is a variable that is available or throughout the whole global state so well, you need to understand one thing. When we are doing console log f name, it will not get the value of the f name. It will just say, it will just check if this has been initialized or not. It will see, oh yeah, f name has been initialized. And after its initialization, that's a different thing. What value we give it? Because we console logging it way before it has been defined, so we cannot really get the value there. Okay, you just checking if, the, if this variable has been initialized. Okay, so what should we get now is undefined. You can see. They're saying, yeah, it, it has been initialized, but it has not been defined yet. It, they cannot access the value yet, but they can access the value if the console log was, I know, you know, entered below it. So you can see that's a different uh, for while using a variable, a variable f name or just let. So if you're trying to con get something, you know, if you're trying to get some function, uh, that you, if you have added a function instead of variable, you can do that using the I mean, you can do that using both of them, like uh, error function or stuff like that. So, what we can do right now, you can see, if you're trying to console, if you're trying to get the value of some variable that has not been yet defined, you can use the let block, so you can make sure that it doesn't exist there, you know, that variable that has been defined in the future. So you can just, you know, kind of like show an error, so you will know, oh yeah, it should not actually get the value even before it has been initialized. Not the initial value, I'm going to say it, it should not get the variable. So many times this leads to bugs. So that's why I mean, maybe like you know people may prefer to use variable. Uh, I mean not in every case, or uh, not actually a variable. I'm gonna say people may pre prefer to use let and constant uh, variables instead of just var because it just access you know it just accessible globally, and that creates a little bit of issues. So if we just say function, uh, I will just say an example. Here we're saying uh, okay, let me just say let f name, and here I'm gonna say let f name is called the test right so now this f name that is here is not this f name that is here you got the point because the f name in you know, this let variable works on a block level now once we inside the function if we are just going to say f name is equal to this that means yeah it's just changing the value of f name to this but if you're just saying let f name is equal to this that means we're just creating another variable with the same name it doesn't care whatever the if the name was used before outside the function or not but we'll just create a new variable by itself and you can use it inside the function all right so if i do a console log f name just to show an example and i will do console log this after this one so we just see if i recent test okay one second we need to call the function actually so you can see we did got to see the first and test and they didn't throw us any error yeah, and if i do a con off this you know saying test if i do a console log of uh, f name again so just to make sure that the f name value was not changed, yeah, Ferris test and Ferris. So basically, we just created another variable inside the function without creating any issues with the same name. That is the power of using let or constant variables. Well, we got the point. Okay, now let me get to the real example. So how we we'll say I'm gonna say you have a function with the name of call. And when we call it, it's just gonna say, uh, let's suppose it's just gonna say, uh, maybe console.log. I'm, okay. Uh, I'm being called, right? So here we on the top, on the very top, even right before initializing the function. If we call the function, it will still run whatever is in the, inside the function, because a function is not like a var you know a variable. You have to define a, var a value for the variable, but a function has the value in itself. Like it doesn't need the value. Function is just a function. You're just you're saying, yeah, dude, this is a bunch of things you have to do. Okay, you have to say, yeah, give him this box, and he will just open the box. He'll say, oh yeah, this is these are the kind of things I have to do. So it it will just do it. But the variable is like you know, you're saying, oh yeah, this is a label, and when you see the label of this thing, you just see okay, some other value is connected with the label. So you just Referencing some other thing with a variable, like you can have a var var one is equal to var two, or you can have var one is equal to null, something like that. So you're just connecting the two things together. You're just connecting a uh, name 
uh, with the value. So that is the thing why we cannot actually get the value of the variable. But you can actually call the function and it will do all of the all of the things that the function is meant to do. Only a normal function. You cannot do it with the uh, arrow function. I will just show you in a minute. I'm being called, right? So that means the this function is actually pretty working fine. But as we already know, as we already know, while we're defining something to a variable, it will only say, okay, is it defined or not? It will not be able to run it. You got the point? So if I say constant, as you know, constant will not work fine. But still, let's say constant call is equal to this is going to be an error function. That's going to say console.log. Uh, I am being called. And we're just calling the function call. It just gives us an error, like initialization error, right? If we say var, call is not a function. Oh, yeah, so that is the thing. You can see what happened here. We're calling it as a function. But here, it's just saying it, okay, yeah, this is a something like undefined thing, right? So it's not really taking it as a function because I already told you it doesn't care what the value is. It will only see if it has been defined or not. So if I do like console.log call, it is going to say undefined. So like I told you before, it doesn't care what's the value. It just see if this thing has been initialized or not. Only if it is a var type. If it's like in let or constant type, it will just say, yeah, it has not been initialized. So that's pretty much it for the hosting. Now we will go on to our second topic, and that is going to be closures. Whoa. Closure. I hope the spelling is correct. So closure is, has been asked, asked in a lot of interviews, to be honest. And yeah, this is a good thing that you should know. Okay, now let's let me get to the closures thing. What exactly are closures and uh, how they work? So closure is just a bunch of function in itself. You're defining few function in them in itself, and you're doing something, all right? So let's say we have function main as an example. We have function main, and inside the function main, we have another function uh, temp, all right? So we have two function in in, in itself. In the main function, we have a name. Name is equal to, let's say, Eldoni. Eldoni. So we're saying inside the function, we're making a variable with the name of Eldoni. But inside the temporary function, all right, we're changing the name value of the na uh, name to let's say first, and we're doing console log that name. We'll just say. This is the innermost function. Okay? So, what are we doing? We're just changing the value of this name into first. And now we will go one step out of this one. We are going to say, we're going to say console.log. Ah! Okay, so we're saying console.log. Okay, this is the outer function, right? So we are here, here calling the name. So the name we're calling here is this name that we changed actually, right? So this is the latest name. But what if you're going to call the name here? Is it going to show us Eldoni or is it going to show us Ferris? Well, we are about to find out. We'll go to index and change this one to closure.js and uh, let's see what is going to happen. This is the outer function, and that shows Eldoni. That means this Ferris really did did not really instructed with our thing. And when we call this thing two times, which you see, okay, this is Eldoni, this is Eldoni. So that means this thing is not really doing anything unless until we call it. Unless until we will call the function, it is not going to do anything. Let's suppose, all right, I'm going to call the function. What what is going to happen anyway, right? So you can see. This is the outer function, Eldoni. This is the innermost function, Ferris, and it just shows the name. But how about we call this console log again that we console logged before? This is the outer function. After calling this function of temp, are we ready for this one? Okay, let's see. This is the outer function, Eldoni. This is the innermost function, Ferris. This is the outer function, Ferris. Did you realize that the name variable? Value has been changed from Eldoni to Ferris once we initialize, once we you know call this function temp. 
So what actually happened? Here in this function, we're saying name is going to be equal to Ferris, okay? We're saying name is going to be equal to Ferris. But this name is never going to get changed unless until we will not call the function. So we have to call this function in order to make sure that it actually changed the name of, uh, no, in order, it, it actually changed the variable name to uh, some new value that we had here. So if we call it 10,000 times, they're going to show us Ferris. But if we don't call this temporary function, it's just going to show us nothing. You got the point? Well, that's the main concept of uh, doing this thing. One second. One second. Okay, so that's the kind of a main thing. Like, I hope you got this thing. I mean, it's kind of like a basic. You can have more function in itself, and then you can do more cool stuff. Well, that was probably it for the closure part. And I would like to make sh you know, mention you another thing. So probably you may have been given a question. They will say, uh, you're given it, you know, okay, we'll give it a function here, four and five. So we are giving, we give you a function like this, four, five, or maybe more function in, in them, something like that, okay? All you have to do, you have to add four and five together and give us the value. So you might be, you might be a little bit confused. Why are the two brackets and why are, this, why are the values differently? Well, don't not worry because I'm here. So I'm gonna say console.log the sum and we'll make a function. So what are we going to do? We will make a function with the name of sum. Okay. So this is going to take the variable a in itself, right? And inside this function, we'll make another function that is just going to be like a you know, kind of like you know what do we say? Uh kind of like an anonymous function. So we'll say uh okay return. So it is going to take b and it will say a plus b. Okay, not really this one. We have to say return function. Okay. So one second. Um to think about this one. One, give me a moment. A plus B, we're trying to do this. Yeah, it's not going to work like that. So, what we have to say function uh, add uh, A plus B, and we'll say return function add. I don't think that, okay, yeah. So, one second, uh, I'll just explain you a minute. So you can see what we did actually here. We did the same thing as like you know we can do in a closure thing. We made a function within a function, and we call this function like a function sum, and we call this function like a function add. Or you could have made this function like an anonymous function. And how do we make an anonymous function? Uh, one minute. I need to think about that one because it's been a while. Um, anonymous function, local function, missing type. I mean, yeah, we gotta give it some name so we can call it. We cannot directly just say, yeah, return this goddamn function. So yeah, that's probably we something we need to do. We need to call another function that is fun inside this function, and this function is going to return a plus b, this a and variable plus b. Now we're in in the world, you no know, uppermost function. We're just saying return add. So it's going to return this whatever we got in here. This is going to return that back to where we're calling it. So we're calling it here. We got some four, uh, five. We'll say it as, uh, let's say first. We're calling first. And let's say we have another one. We have five plus five plus ten. That means twenty, right? So we'll have something like B. Then we have function. First. Second, we contain C. So it just a little bit complicates the thing. We're gonna say return a plus b plus c. Okay. Let's go here. All right. Here we need to say return second. Now here we're saying return first. You can see we got this e20. And that is how it's done. This is how closures really work. Okay, one second. Well, yeah, good to see that we actually got this, got through the points, okay?
I was going to make an important point here in the closure section, right? So we'll make it just a little bit below. So like a, like a function, it's not really connected with the closure, but I'm just mentioning it because we'll be, we'll be talking about this thing in the event loop. So yeah, we'll say timeouts. This going to be weird. it's just going to be a normal function. And it's not really much related to closures, to be honest. But I want to see, I want to show you what is going to happen here. Like, you should see this, okay? Well, uh, never mind. I want to talk about this in the image loop because it's not really much related to closures anyway, right? So I think uh, I showed you ex exactly like how do you, how we can use closures. And another thing I want to mention, like about the closure part, so say we have a let qty means the quantity is equal to zero, and we have a function add. Uh, maybe we have a function add, All right? Well, I don't think uh, this is really closures. My bad. Never mind. We we'll make a new file with the name of event loop. I don't think we need to make a file though, because we are going to do this in the website itself. I will mention the website in a minute. But let's get it connected here. Good. Let's go to event loop demo website and this loop. This website is called Lope, okay? It's a cool website. It actually you might be thinking, oh the hell is this? The hell is a call stack? What is what are web APIs? What are the called IQ? What is this little bit of you know audience kind of stuff? Well, this is about browser runtime environment. You might be a little bit confused, but first of all, to be sure, do you know that JavaScript is a single threaded language? That means at a moment, JavaScript can only handle one function. It cannot handle multiple functions at a time. Well, you might be saying, oh, but it just runs thousands of functions in a, in a span of a second. Well, that's because it is fast. It just does the work fast. That doesn't mean it you know, reads fun multiple functions at a time. Give me a moment. So, what exactly happens is if we have a like console the log function, what it will happen is it will JavaScript will read the code from the top to the bottom. First of all, it will go into into that function. You can see what is what are you saying? It will push that function inside the call stack. Okay, so it will not run any other function. If the uh, function is you know synchronous, that means it is not any asynchronous function. It doesn't have any promises stuff like that. What will it do? Actually, there was a promise. Functions are also synchronous. So, what is it going to is what is it going to do? It is just going to you know put that function in the call stack. It is going to push that function inside the call stack. Let let's say like an array. So when the work of the console log or any other function that it pushed inside the call stack is done, what is it going to do? It is going to pop it out. It is going to remove it from the call stack. It doesn't like you know it it doesn't add the variables here. It doesn't Push the variable in here because variables are just defined. They are not functions. They don't do any work. You know that. So yeah, what is going to happen? It's going to push that function console log in here. When the console log function is done, like it did console, it, it did the work it had to do. It did added something in the console. They are going to remove the function from the call stack according to their needs. Like according, we are having more functions awaiting. So let's say console. The log first console and we say save and run. You can see what happened. It was literally quite a bit quicker. Uh, if I click on rerun, you can see something got got into call stack and it got away. And this is our console log. Console log first console. It is got in there. We got removed. Got in there. Get got removed. Okay. And let's say we have console the log. Second console. Now, what is going to happen? Realize what is going to happen in the call stack. 
first console got removed got added got removed so you can see first we added the first console got removed second console added second console removed so it just added the function removes the function adds another function and removes that function now what happens if we add some function like a set timeout or some you know asynchronous uh, functions that actually takes time to complete but you might know already what's the benefit of using an async await function it is that it doesn't block the code so as you already know the a first console will not allow the second console to work until and unless it doesn't its work is not done unless until first console will not be printed on the on our console the second console will not be there okay it will wait till this function is done because the core second can only handle one function at a time so it will wait for the first console to finish first console work to finish and then it will go on the next console so probably well, we make some requests to new browser api and any other website apis it sometimes take uh, quite a bit while to get a response back so you don't want to wait like till you will get the response back it could be 5 seconds 6 seconds you don't want to you stop all of your code all of your website to just you know stop first of all you stop uh, just for the api to re respond give something back but what you want to do you want like you know website to fully load to all complete do all of his function and whenever you get the response you just run any other function that that you were wanting to run at that moment let me just show you that let's say we have a set timeout okay set timeout function well uh, this website doesn't take uh, a error function so you have to we have to write it a function like this so yeah now we're saying console log set timeout function and this should be shown after five seconds. Does this mean that we're going to first of all see first console and then it's going to wait for five seconds, then we're going to see set timer function and then it's going it's just going to run a second console? Well the answer is no. What is going to happen instead is we're going to say first console, then it's going to push that set timer function in here. It is going to see yeah, it's an asynchronous function, so it's going to push that uh, set timer function. Uh, it's just going to remove it, uh, move it from the call stack inside of web APIs. And in the web APIs, it's just going to wait unless until it gets some promise back. Let's say like the promise failed or something like that. Like when the five so five seconds finish, what is going to happen? It is going to push this thing, push that you know function inside of a callback queue, or you can say task queue. So what what is task queue stands for? Well, task queue or is a you know a point uh, area. In our browser runtime, that runs the functions once all of the website is completely loaded. So the, the functions in the, the that are inside in the project inside inside of a task queue will not be executed unless until all of our website code has not been completely executed using the call stack. Now at the endpoint, now when the call stack is totally empty, there is nothing else, no else function from the uh, no else synch synchronous function from here. Like we don't have any more console logs, so we don't have any other functions to run. What is going to happen? This event loop, it is going to take this callback function. It is going to you know, move it from there, and it's, it's it's going to push it inside of a callback call stack. In the call stack, it is going to see whatever function we want to do. Like let's say in the set timer function, we want to do console log. It is going to take that thing out of that anonymous function or whatever function you have, and it is going to do the work. It's going to do the work after all of the things completed. So, what should happen? We should first of all see first console. Then we should see second console, and after five seconds, we should see set timer function. Let's say same and run. First console, set timer got in here. It got in here, as you can see. We got the second console, and it's waiting five seconds. After that, it, it pushed itself in the callback queue. It uh, moved to call stack, and it called itself. Hope you did realize that. Well, that was quite a bit fast, but JavaScript is literally like 100 times faster than they actually showing us here. But they are showing us showing this here. Because you know, just to make, just to give a brief, uh, um, you know, imagination, just to give you a brief knowledge about how things are actually working. So if we call another set term of function, which is set term of function, let's say console log another function, and this thing is going to wait for six seconds. If you click on the save plus run, you can see first console was running. It pushed the five second uh, function in there, six second, and they are waiting. Now it's going to push it inside the callback queue. It got the thing done. 
and it pushed another function inside the callback queue and it got the work done so yeah you got you see you saw what exact actually happened but how about we go we'll make the timer zero seconds so what is going to happen it's quickly going to add them into the web APIs and the web APIs doesn't need to wait any time because it's zero seconds so you're just quickly going to push in the callback queue but it will still wait unless until all of the things are not done let's see we have a second console okay so we have a last console just to increase the time a little bit more okay save and run first console then first function added here second function added there directly added here last console after last console is done add the first function the set time function and another one that was added after it that is the another function right because first of all this first this upper function was added in the web api that means it has the more higher proper priority to be executed first because it is it is going to add be it's, it's going to be added now uh, first in the callback queue after that we're going to add the another function inside the callback queue right so well that's why even if we give the uh you know time zero to a set time of function it is still going to perform at the very end moment that's the only uh thing you have to understand all right so i don't think there's anything else that we have to discuss in here maybe if we just you know no there's really, really really isn't much of a thing so if i call this set function if we call this after this one so what is going to see what is going to say first of all first console second console lost console and then the function and then set timeout it does it depends upon uh, where you put this thing all right so well yeah that was probably it all about the event listeners event queues stuff like that and i want to show you a really really good example hope you really enjoyed it right okay let's say we have a we have a function run time okay run time in here we have a for loop i is equal to let's say i is equal to one unless until i is uh, until i is smaller or equal to five i should be increased right let's say i is going to be variable as an example as, as i'm showing i will explain why i made the i as a variable so in here we're saying yeah we have a set of few set number functions that are going to be equal to like you know i multiply by thousand so they're going to run at different they're going to show up as at different points like different times first of all i is going to be one so it, it will just be after one second then two seconds then three seconds then four seconds but we what we care about is the, what they are going to show we are saying console the log i so what we expect to see here is that we think they're going to console log as one then console log as two three four five but what they will console log us it is going to be a little bit more confusing for you well okay so we can go back to our browser let's go here you can see six 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 it got console log five times because we're running the loops only five times right but what the hell is this why six because i is going to be only one and i is always going to be small equal to five then why six isn't it a little bit more confusing well 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 we're saying console log i so here there's the same console like we talked about in hosting we're saying console log the i that means basically we're not giving it any value we're just you know linking few variables together we're saying console log the initialization value or the initial the variable i so we're just saying once the set timeout will run it will give it the current value of i whatever that current value of i was present at that moment when you know, let's say first of all i was one and this set timeout is going to run after one second but the follow ups are too fast and what happened when I, I like you might be thinking why is it six well let me show you something you can see okay here okay i'm just seeing okay yeah it does work here we're saying i is until i is smaller or equal to five it rest run it loops perfectly so once i is five it is going to say okay i is smaller or equal to five yeah it is equal is actually equal to five and then it's it's going to see i plus plus it will become six but then it will not match the condition it will not match this condition so it will not run this thing again 
but I, I would have been already became uh, the value of 6, right? And here, console log, log, console log, it is taking the reference. It is taking the latest value of the i present at the moment when it was being called. It will not take the value before it was being called. Like it's, it's. I told you already, it's an async function. So it is, it is get called after all the things are finished doing. All the other things are finished doing in the, uh, and the code stack. So yeah, that is something we have to understand. If I call it like. Just say, I would say let i is equal to one. You would say different thing. Okay. 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 My bad. My bad. Let's refresh. Six. Six. Okay. One second. Okay. I'm gonna call it anything. If I say let. If I call it let. One, two, three, four. So you can see, if I don't call it anything, it's not. It is going to show six 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 because it's going to be initialized globally. But I, this is an advantage that you might see. There's an advantage of using just the uh, let instead of functions. Let in defining the variable with the let, so it'll just lock that variable in a glow in a in a block state. So it'll just show the values that were available at that moment. It will not just keep changing the variable on a global level. So you got the point. That is why I like to use let. Well, not like this. I mean, it's going to be global by default. Right? Yep. Well, that was something that I wanted to tell you guys about. It's a long time. Well, yeah, I guess that is about the event loops. The most main concept that you should know in uh, JavaScript function. And yeah, we are done with JavaScript. Let's move to React JavaScript. We'll do beyond create React React app in a React app folder. It's just going to do it. It's for, it, it should take us around one minute, so I'll be back after a minute. Okay, so React app is has been built. Let me just close this thing. Let me go to React app. CD React app. Okay. Let's delete a few craps. Okay, let's say RFC, React Functional Component. We don't care about anything else. No strict mode app. Okay, nope, nope, nope. We are good to go. I mean here. Let's first of all call talk about the life cycles in React means the React life cycle hook. We have few like component did mount, component will mount, and component will did component will Amount okay. We have four life cycles in React. Now, when the React hooks were introduced, we can use them in using just one hook that's called use effect. And uh, I will show you how we can use it. It's a use effect hook, shift plus enter to import it, and we'll make it like that. Now, first of all, we're saying component did mount, and for that, we just have to add a comma. In a bracket, empty bracket here. So this does exactly the work what the component did mount will do. It will call, it will do its thing inside here. We can fetch something. We can fetch some uh, you know data from some U URL, and it will only do that thing only once. It will not read you know keep doing it again and again when you're pressing some inputs when you're doing something in a website. It will not keep reinitializing the use effect hook again and again unless until the component has not been re rendered or you have not refreshed the page, it will not call it again. That is the thing, that is the property of component amount using the use effect. Uh, this hook is just going to call it one time, one single time once the component will be, you know, uh, fully uh, all of the things have been loaded completely. And then we have component will mount. So, we're going to say use effect. 
it's the same hook but here what we are all going to say we're going to give it some variable so we'll say some uh connection uh some variable so what is happening here we're saying component will mount so we are saying we have a use take hook in our website in our react application and whenever we want we whenever we will change some values in that uh, uh in that use that or uh use that variable what we want to do we want to call this use effect hook so maybe we do some api calls and when the user might have entered a different data you want to call this use effect hook so you can show different data to the user like maybe like a search page like your like maybe like a search bar i'm going to say you're having a search bar you know if the user is typing something you want to show different you know results to the user and you can use use effect in here and you can only run it once this some variable has been is been updated again and again so that's about the thing we can do with component will mount and then we have a component will update that's a very basic one this component will update and here it's just our basic use effect hook okay we're just saying yeah a component will update so just keep running this use effect hook uh, as many times as possible. It's not. It's not going to loop through the user hooks. But if you do anything, any little activity in you, you know, in your uh, comp in this component system, like you are having input, you are doing something there, it is going to call this user hook again and again and again and again. You are trying to you know add some value in any variable. It's it just going to call this user effect hook again and again. So that's about the component will update. And at the end, we have component will unmount. That means you are actually going to leave this component. You want to close few things like you are having a few set interval. You are doing something in the using the user fitting hook, and once the user leaves that component, leaves the home page and goes to the store page, something like that, you want to start terminate the task that you're doing. That's the time. The component will when mount comes in place. We have a report return function in here. Not actually like this. Can we do it like this? I will say. Oh, that was this. Spider, holy shit! So we actually have some like a return function. So what is this function going to do? It just going to stop every single thing. Damn it, right? So we are. Let's say we have an inset interval. This function. I mean, it's just going to do something repeatedly. We have a let's like, let's say like we have kind of like a timer thing. We have a let timer is equal to set interval. And we have a we're just saying yeah console the log something again and again after every one second and it will just keep doing it doing it unless until we are on the component itself but at the moment when we are leaving the component we don't want to see this thing again in the console log because we already know that react also just compile all the javascript code together so it's not going to determine this task so we need to do this manually right and how we do that we're going to do this component will unmount use of it hook it will just you know Terminate the task what we want to say. We'll say clear interval and here we'll put timer. So when I will leave this page, when I will leave this component, it is going to clear the interval, it is going to stop it. It's not like you know you're gonna uh, you're having a browser, you have yeah, you you're having your website on the browser and you will come back to your code, it, you're going to do something, it is going to terminate the task. It's not going to terminate the task like that unless until you don't go to another page in the website, in the that in that website itself, you're going to go to the another web, you know, another page of the website. So then it's going to determine the task. So that is about the hooks. I hope that was a great topic to, to know about, right? I mean, yeah, who don't like hooks, right? Good, good, good. So, well, yeah. Now let's do our last thing. That is make a little bit of, little bit of not actually like a project, but this is like, you know, interview question that I was asked personally. And I didn't thought of it as a much of a question. I will not say it's like some kind of difficult question but I think it's kind of fine and uh, maybe you might get asked the same question maybe who knows there are thousands billions of questions to be asked so I'll just commit this out and I will do the work so what are we going to do we'll have a bunch of stars okay let's say we have five stars if user clicks on any of the stars let's say user clicks on the middle star the star the user clicks on should become the red color and all this are lying on the left side of that star 
should become green color and all of, the, all of the stars lying on the right side of the star should become orange color and how it's done I'll just show you right now first of all we'll say uh, constant stars will make a, a array I'll say array of uh, length 5 maybe I can say length 10 and we're going to fill it with uh, just the stars right it's going to uh, have an empty array with, a, with 10 uh, empty spaces not empty spaces like 10 empty uh, uh, empty length so it has 10 empty kind of like spaces thing like that I would say like it's an empty array with 10 um, positions that are empty and indexes empty that are empty and we are filling those indexes with just this star if you have not watched my video about the array functions I will definitely prefer you to watch that video right now okay so this is how it's going to look like more like uh, this but 10 times like this star in here but 10 times so this is just a shorter version of this code because we can just increase over 10 to 50, uh, 10 to 15 or 20, something like that. So we'd have to, you know, type star, 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 something like that. So yeah, that's the basic thing. And here we want to see the stars. So we will be using J6. We'll say stars the map. It's just going to return all of, all of any anything we have here. We get the element and the index. And what we want to return, we want to return a span element. And here we'll say K is equal to the index. Not bad. Easy call the index k. You don't have really much of an idea what happened here. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, we're saying key is equal to i index, and uh, we will have a style of some like cursor is going to be a pointer, and we will give it an id. Id is just going to be star number plus i. Okay. We just give it a, you know, we don't want to give it just a number. We want to give it something like star number and the index. And here, we just want to put the star itself. So what should we see? We just say npm start and then we should see what is going to happen. Alrighty, this is our browser, it's loading something. Good. We get to see 10 stars that are actually having something like that, right? Good. Now what we want to do, we just give it some ID, so it means all of the stars have their own IDs with some star 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, something like that, you know, yeah, till 9, good. Now what we want to do, we want to say, if I clicked on them, I want to do something, right? Of course I have to do something, I would say, on click, get the E, give the E to change color, we give it E.target.id. Because I have only worked with the ID itself. In the ID, we have star number plus i. So we only need the i. So I will replace the star number in the function itself. Okay. Here I would say constant change color will get the element, we get the e. E just like, you know, our ID of wherever we're clicking on. Okay. Now we're saying constant color is going to be equal to e dot replace. We'll replace uh, the star no with nothing. Now we'll convert this all the thing inside a number. So we only get the index, right? Good. Now we will have a for loop. This for loop is going to be i is equal to zero, and i until it's smaller than length of stars, it should be increasing. So now how we can make a logic that is actually going to change the colors, okay? First of all, we would say if i is smaller than current, that means we want to make all of the you know stars that are on the left side of the star that we clicked, we want to make them green. So we'll say document dot get element by id. Here we're gonna say practice we'll say star no plus 
i dot style dot color is going to be equal to green we want to make them green right otherwise if i is going to be the current color itself like we clicked on uh, on a star and the index is the star itself right? the star index itself right star id itself so we'll say this thing but we want to make the color red and else if the this index is not even on the left side of the stars not even the started click that means it, it only can be expected on the right side of the stars right so let's just say document this thing color should become orange all of the stars on the right side of the click star should become orange the star that was clicked itself should become red and the star lying on the left side of the star of the of that click star should become green now let's see it in the real example okay i is not defined Find. Oh yeah, in React behind it, we need to say let i is equal like that. We cannot just say i is equal to zero, right? Okay, now let's see is it gonna work or not. So when we click on any star, you can see yeah it did worked. It made a star red, all the stars on the left side green, all the stars on the right side uh, orange, and it we can do it literally in, uh, with as many stars we want. You can see. We can make the first, we can click on the first one, nothing is going to be green. Click on the last one, nothing is going to be orange. And we actually can increase the thing to 50. That's the power of array functions, you know. I can click anywhere, it's just going to do its work, right? Well, yeah, this was the interview question that I was asked myself, and I was not able to answer it that time. I didn't practice it because it was never been asked before. Uh, well, the issue that I faced that time was that I didn't know React, and uh, I didn't know that we call the functions like that. Like, I mean, I was just saying, uh, on click, and I was just, I was just saying, like, you know, let me show you what I was doing. I was saying, uh, on click is equal to change color the function itself, and this function was being called even before we were calling this return statement, and I was like, oh, what is happening? And damn yeah. Well, that was it for this video. I hope you did enjoy this. You got a lot of more information. I would love to make more videos in the future. Hope to see you soon, guys. Please subscribe to this channel if you have not shared this video. Comment down below how you like these videos. And uh, let me know what type of videos you want to see in the future, okay? And share my video like I told before. So, have a nice day. Goodbye. See you. Keep drilling. Keep enjoying the life. Life is short. I will say it again. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.